All right, we are on. I've got Scott Isbell here with me. I am so excited to be talking to you live, Scott Isbell. Where are you right now? Where's this incredible room that I see you in? I'm, I'm actually back uh, in my hometown right outside of Boston. Um, just got back from Philadelphia and, and had uh, a couple midterms, and now it's spring break, so I'm excited about that. Awesome. <clears throat> well, Scott, I want to talk to you a little bit about some of the obstacles that you faced in the industry. You've been obviously in the music industry since you were a little boy. Um, yeah. I can see some of your influences right behind you. Yeah, there's um, Elvis and Michael Jackson. Um, and I have people like Wayne Gretzky <clears throat> up there. Uh, who, uh, what's his face? Who does the uh, George Foreman? I have him up there too. <laughs> the Grills. No, th that's awesome. And I see the Hanson brothers. I tried to yeah. interview them quite a few years ago. Someone I know knows them, so it's kind of interesting. They're up there. Did you get to do it? No, but I, I, I still have that connection that still knows them. So it's that might be a I, cool thing. I know. I know. Well, Scott, tell me about some of the obstacles that you have faced. Because I know that this industry definitely is not an easy one. What, tell no, me a little bit about what you go through. I think the biggest obstacle I overcame was first just being seen as an actual uh, performer or singer and not just someone, some little kid singing in his bedroom. I mean, it took a lot of, I almost want to say like faking it till you make it, where you, you I mean, you have to show off your skills, but you also got to just show how confident you are in yourself. People will then start to respect you for that. You can't, you kind of have to earn that. And people, especially in the entertainment business, they're all really judgmental. They're judgmental about things that they can't do themselves. I mean, it's like that in the business world as well. People will always be a critic. And I think it's the biggest challenge has been overcoming that, not letting you know, people who are hating on me get to me because I obviously am doing something that, uh, they're jealous of so they feel the need to waste their time uh, or they just have no life so it's just like sorting out all of the negativity and, and continuing to think positive thoughts is has been a big uh, help for me awesome I know you've done so well and and every single young um, celebrity that I've interviewed has talked about the fact that the haters Kind I know. Of get to they're, them, but they've got to ruthless. figure out a way around it. And I, I'd be lying if I said it still doesn't get to me. Like, if, if there's a nasty comment on a YouTube video of mine, I let it get to me, even though this person, I have no idea who they are, and I'll probably never even meet them. So it's just, I mean, now, it's I tough, but see, I guess you got to deal with that, comments. whether you're in the entertainment business or you're, you're a young entrepreneur. There are going to be people who are going to doubt you or just try to put you down, and you just can't let it get to you. Absolutely. I, I recently saw even, even Damon John, you know, from Shark Tank. Yeah. He was writing about how someone critiqued him and he didn't much like it. So it doesn't matter at what level you are, you're going to get I know, it. He's basically, a, he, he's basically a billionaire and, and it still gets to him. So Exactly. So you've right. got to have a strategy behind that, right? And so I, I like how you just say, you know, I try to understand where the comment might have come from. You know, that uh, yeah. they might just try be trying to bring you down because they're not doing anything. So I think it's also important to know, like, if, if you are starting up a business or you're a performer, you are putting yourself out there in the public eye, and you got to just be ready for uh, people to come at you because, I mean, people like – people doubted uh, Steve Jobs with Apple. They thought it was ridiculous when it first came out, built that from his garage, so – I mean, if you, if you believe, if you let these people get to you, you're not going to succeed in your dreams at all. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, tell me about, so that's, that's a huge obstacle that you've overcome. Tell me about where you're going now. Where's your vision and how are you working towards that? Yeah, I, I have such a few different visions, uh, both as a performer, but I'm also uh, doing a lot of co like marketing and consulting work for people, especially artists. Uh, I'm, I'm managing myself, a, a cinematographer, because uh, 
artist management is definitely one of my passions. I want to I want to eventually have a full blown management company like Scooter Braun, Justin Bieber's manager, has done. Uh, that's I mean that's kind of my entrepreneurial side of things. I want to kind of I want to I mean I want to make it as a singer, but I want to utilize those contacts I get so I can develop other people as well. In terms of my music, though. I mean, I, I've been recording new stuff. I have my songwriter, Frankie Storm. She's really amazing. She, um, she wrote Don't Stop the Music by Rihanna and Battlefield by Jordan Sparks. And she's written for Demi Lovato and Enrique Iglesias and Britney Spears. And so, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's really amazing to get to work with someone that incredible who's, you know, won Grammys, who's been on that stage. Um, and just, I don't know, just like... I think the biggest obstacle has been just being ready, or another obstacle is just being ready when these opportunities arise and not either get really overwhelmed to the point where you just don't look ready and you don't look professional, and then also just making sure you're fully prepared for these type of things. Awesome. Some of these, some of these things only come once. Yeah. Yeah, that's so true, and you've been plugging away since I met you, and you were such a go-getter back then. When I was doing the Teen Performance Magazine, you mm -hmm. asked me, hey, how can I help you with this magazine? I thought that was brilliant. Yeah. That's great. I mean, and, uh, the biggest, yeah, I mean, a big piece of advice I have is if you're going to succeed in whatever you're doing, and the, the reality is people aren't going to help you out unless you, you can do something to help them out. I mean, it, there are so maybe there are some people who will go out of the way just to do something to be nice, but it's most times in business I feel like you you're gonna succeed when you're able to do something for somebody else to help them. It's so true. Whenever you're in a meeting, it's almost like, how can I help you? I know or, it's so bad, but <laughs> it's true. It it is, but you know what? I I go to a lot of networking events and that's one of the first things that you say is you look at someone and instead of me talking about what I'm doing my first comment is how can I help you and then you listen to what they're doing yeah and then and then you get all the ideas out of your head of how you can help them and then they go through their Rolodex on how they can help you so that's yeah. kind of the, the new um, the new economy is really how you can help other people that's how people are gonna make it in business not like stealing ideas or stealing the pie from someone else it's got to be uh, an economy where we help each other you eventually absolutely yeah. absolutely well scott i'm so thankful for the opportunity to speak with you live and for your tips to help our young people in our jumpstart to success program i want to thank I'm you excited so much. for this program I, I wish i wish this type of program was in schools when i uh was in elementary school and middle school and high school. I wish they had this. Put more entrepreneurial type programs in there to right. really help people just say, hey, I can do it too. Right. I feel like if, if someone creates a new social network inside or whatever, if, if somebody else is able to do it, I don't see why any kid is not able to do it. If, I mean, kids especially, they have, they're so creative. They have the tremendous amount of ideas in their head, and I think it's just putting them into reality. And, cause yeah. Yeah, I mean, I feel like everybody is born with the same even ground. It's just what you do with it and how proactive you are. Absolutely. Well, I I know that this is going to inspire some people to get out and do something with their goals. So I want to thank you so much, Scott Isbell, for of showing course. up on the Jumpstart program. I'm happy to come on any time you need. Thank you, Scott. Well, I'll be I'll be taking you up on that. There's a All lot right, of awesome. advice that I want to I get from you. All right. Sounds good.